Welcome to Inbox with Julia Cosby at Tag TV. Our guest today is Mississauga's very own singer-songwriter Bree Taylor. Bree is a country songstress who is a force to be reckoned with. You can't help but get absorbed in her melodic voice and authentic raw lyrics. She's been recently nominated for a 2021 Mississauga Arts Award, Solo Vocalist in Emerging Category. Her latest release, Kryptonite, delves into the human experience and intricacies of love. Hey, leave a message. Hey, it's me. Um, I just, I can't do this anymore. It's like we take one step forward and then we're two steps back again. And I just, I feel like we're going in circles. I just, I can't do this anymore. We just, it has to stop. We're roller coaster. We're all ups and downs. I can't help to. Thank you for joining us today, Bree. How and when did you know that you wanted to be a singer? I think it's something that I was literally born to do. Everyone's asked me, like, how did you get your start? And I really believe that, like, being born to a music tape in the delivery room was, like, my mission in life, kind of telling me and calling me to do this. Uh, I grew up, my parents were not musically inclined, but they're big music fans, and they always have me surrounded by music. And as a very um, empathetic and emotional young child, I was very much of a writer. So I'd always channel my emotions into creativity and into songs. And so it just really just feels like something I was meant to do. So I feel like I've wanted it my whole life. So you just said that you were born to a tape. Uh, which tape was that? <laughs> and uh, wh why, would, why would you be born to a tape? Why were they playing music in uh, the delivery room? Was it just easier or they really um, like the well, band? My dad my dad's a big music fan, so he is always, he was making mixtapes, so he made a mixtape, and actually James Taylor was very prominent on the mixtape, which is one of the reasons they gave me my middle name, Taylor, which is wow. how we got free Taylor. <laughs> Who are your biggest musical influences? It's very diverse. <laughs> So it's really difficult for me to really narrow it down. But some people that I'm really looking up to right now, I would say is like Carrie Underwood's been a huge influence. Shania Twain, I grew up on. Um, Amanda Marshall, if anyone knows of her, she's kind of more of like a pop rocker girl from Canada that I grew up listening to. Um, I really love Kelsey Ballerini, Pink. Um, you know, uh, my, one of my favorite songwriters is Emily Wise Band. And I actually feel like she'd be somebody I'd love to collaborate with and write a song with. Um, there's so many to name. If you could collaborate with any artist, who would it be? I know you mentioned a few, but if you were to pick one, who would it be? Ooh, that's super tough. I feel like I love cross genre collaborations and because of my music and how different it is, I've always loved Halsey and her voice and her sound. I feel like it'd be really cool. And her and Kelsey Ballerini did a collaborative song recently in the last couple of years. And uh, I love that. So I, that would be really cool for me. What's your song process for writing? Um, it changes every time. It really depends on my session. So if I'm writing alone or if I'm a co-write, um, I've been doing some co-writes more recently and it really depends on the other people. Who are we writing for? Is it a song for myself? Usually a lot of stuff I go into a writing session for when it comes to me and my own music and what I'm going to put out, it's very intentional and I come in with intention. So I have kind of a really good idea of what I want to say or as like a story I want to tell um, or I've already kind of started brainstorming storming myself and I kind of bring that to my collaborators and pull that together. I usually like to start with like a feeling or a story and then pull through some lyrics. Melodies will just kind of come to me and then we just build off that. So for your latest uh, music video, you did a country song. What was the inspiration behind that? Um, so my new single, Kryptonite, and the music video are something that we really wanted to really push the limits with creativity, especially for, you know, the indie and the country scene, especially. Um, nobody's been really doing CGI music videos, and my very talented videographer, he learned that skill with everything being closed down with all the lockdowns and everything. He decided, hey, I'm going to learn something new and challenge myself, and we decided to take his creativity and kind of challenge that even further with him creating this entire Kryptonite world. World. So it was really, really cool. And I just, I'm so amazed at what came to be and so proud of it. And I really wanted to just do something different that people aren't doing. 
So I know that your videographer was Alex Gayo, so very talented individual. So yes. how, how did you guys come up with the concept for this? This is quite amazing. Was it um, a bit, some of his ideas, some of your ideas? How did this all come together? Thank you so much. I'm so glad that everybody's been liking it and that the you know reception of, of fans and people watching and, and viewers has been so great. And the feedback's been so great. Um, when we were kind of coming up with the idea, we bounced a bunch of different ideas off of our heads of like where we were thinking of going. And then ultimately we just decided let's do something different. He said, hey, let me see if I can figure this out and do this. I kind of told him a little bit of my vision. He kind of pulled some inspiration from Superman Returns, the movie. And I was like, yes, can we have kryptonite all across this little island? Um, it'd be kind of cool to physically like kind of put that in there. And then he also had an, an idea from like the cliffs in New Zealand and how beautiful the scenery is. And he was like, what if we put you on a cliff? And it was just really cool to like collaborate and bounce ideas off each other. And I've been working with him for all of my music videos since my first country single, Turn It Up. So he's been somebody that really understands me and my vision and my sound for my music so it's just really it's a cool experience to just bounce ideas off each other and pull pull something together and it came together so well you began your career as a teenager working within the pop genre to eventually decide to create country music what made you decide to switch genres so I've been asked this quite a bit and it's a really great question because it is interesting to kind of hear that happen for an artist's career and it goes all different directions. I've got so many friends who are musical and and have done genre switches. For me, I feel like I was always rooted in country when I was always songwriting, I was always storytelling and I felt like I was resisting country music for the, be for the beginning parts of my career because I was being told more by the industry who to be and what to do and and you know you know you can't be this different kind of cross genre collaborative um, person in country it has to be country country and I wasn't a typical I'm not a typical country girl and I felt like I had to mold myself into an image in, to, in order to stay in country or to be in country. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go pop because I don't really feel like I'm a typical country girl. And then, you know, I, a couple years into it, it just didn't feel me and it didn't feel genuine. Like I love the songs that I put out and they are 100% me. But in terms of just the elements of the industry and the storytelling of the songs, it translates a lot better with the country. And I'm just kind of trying to come in here and do something different, but stay true to myself. In January, you release an acoustic off the floor version of your song cry to connect with your listeners and draw attention to mental health can you tell us a little bit more about why you decided to do that yeah, so mental health is something that's really important to me. It's a cause very, very close to my heart. Um, I've been very open about my personal journey with depression and anxiety since I was a kid. Um, it's been something that I felt very ashamed of growing up and wasn't openly able to talk about. And I feel like as I've gotten older and I've gone through doing, doing a lot of healing for myself, uh, I've just seen how important it is to be open and sharing your story and letting people know that it's okay to struggle and have those moments where they're down, but that it also gets better and to let people know that they have you know resources and there's a, to being an advocate and really letting people know that there's someone to turn to or that it's okay to talk about what you're going through so the song originally was just something that was so heartwarming to put out to have a message like that and was so in alignment with me and then i just felt like let's revisit it strip the song down do a really raw acoustic version of it and just do a special release especially in january with bell let's talk day in canada so i kind of i've always been a supporter of that and that's something that was really important to me You've mentioned on your website that your career and brand is built upon authenticity, resilience and honesty. Why are those traits important to you to maintain throughout your career? I think that with the entertainment industry, I've seen, and as I've kind of said, like you're almost told or forced or guilted into being a certain way to fit, to be accepted by the industry as a whole or by fans or whoever it is. And as I've gotten older and gone through my journey of, you know, finding who I am as an artist and as a person and navigating through the world, I just realized that being yourself is what's really m more resonating with people. And it's the only way to really live your life. I feel like I'm more, that when I come into my own and I, I step into myself that that's 
when I feel like I'm doing the best that I can in life and I feel like I'm the happiest and there's only one you on this planet. So why be anybody else or why try to be somebody you're not? So it's just something that I've really preached to all of my fans and, and listeners and followers. So, you know, I practice what I preach. So I walk what I, I walk the talk and I, I walk the walk and I talk the talk and you know, you gotta, I just feel like that's something that's really important to me. And it's just been part of who I am as an artist. Can you tell me more about your song Kryptonite? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kryptonite was a song that I wrote. I was, you know, in the dating scene and finding a lot of emotionally unavailable men who had commitment issues or just weren't going to be on the same page. So it was just something that I had been going through and that I know so many of my friends have gone through. And I just feel like it's something everybody can relate to at some point in their life that they've felt like even though this person wasn't right for them, they couldn't help themselves but keep going back and getting pulled back in and drawn into that person in this like vicious kind of circle that never ends. So I was like, you know, this is so relatable and I feel like I want to speak this message through my song and tell this story. And um, I basically went into the writing session with my co-writers kind of doing almost like a therapy session telling them exactly what I was going through and what I've heard from other people and pulled the song together. And I'm just so happy with how it turned out. Well, it was a beautiful song. What has been the feedback that you've received on it from others? Honestly, exactly like I thought it would be, where people were saying, you know what, I'm going through this exactly the same situation right now, or I've been there. Um, the dancers, we were, um, we have dancers in the music video, and the lady who owned the studio that we were had the dancers rehearse at, she was like, yeah, I have a guy in my life, you know, that back in the day we were like that. And I feel like at any point in your life, you've had that one person that you can always be like, yeah, that's my that person was my kryptonite. Or maybe it's your current partner in a positive way. I've had a lot of positive feedback too, where someone's like, my boyfriend's my kryptonite. Tonight. And you know what? That's okay too. So it's really cool to see that people are interpreting it in different ways as well and not necessarily in a negative connotation. But it's been really great feedback and I'm just glad people are connecting with the song. What is your favorite song or project that you've worked on throughout your entire career? This is a very challenging question. I feel like I, when we're, as an artist, we put so much of our heart and soul into our song babies. So I feel like they are all a part of me and I love all of them so equally, but I'd have to say right now, Kryptonite would be my favorite just because of how different the whole vibe of the song, the theme, the whole branding that we have behind it with the music video and everything. It's just really, I wanted to take things up 10 levels and up a few notches and really push those limits and so that's kind of going to be my favorite for now. What are some other projects that you hope to accomplish during your career? Any that you're currently working on or that you hope to do at some point in the future? Hmm, well, I would love to start touring again. So as soon as we're able to do that, that's a huge thing that I want to get back to doing as soon as possible. I love performing shows and being in person at the shows and connecting with fans. So that's a huge thing. I'm a very personable person and like I love that in-person connection. Um, so shows are hopefully undetermined right now. In terms of future projects, I do have an album that's been in the works that we've been delaying because I have a very kind of specific release um, idea that I have for how I want to do things. Um, do you have, it's titled, it's all there, ready to go. I'm just continually adding to it because I keep releasing, you know, new music. So I'll just keep doing that until I'm able to, you know, have an, a proper full release with a tour. I've been hoping to do a tour across Canada and the U.S. with that album whenever we're able to release that. Oh, that sounds really exciting. One thing I want to mention, I watch your YouTube video where you discuss um, about you being deaf and how that has affected your music and your career. Can you uh, open up to us a little bit about that? Yes, I would love to. It's something that I'm starting to talk about more and more. I feel like I was more ashamed of it when I was younger and earlier on in my career because I felt like I would be judged in a way. But I've realized again, coming into that authenticity and just embracing who I am, I am a part of a minority group of people who have major hearing loss. I do wear hearing aids, I have them in now. Something that I do rely on very much in terms of communication. So it's very important to me as an artist to bring awareness to that issue because I think it's something that in the music industry isn't talked about enough but that you know no matter what you have in front of you in your life no matter what life gives you you can still go after your dreams and achieve your goals no matter what is thrown at you so it's not something that I was born with it's kind of some I had a lot of health issues um, throughout my young teen, young life into my teens that kind of deteriorated my hearing and brought me to this point but instead of giving up on my dreams of being a singer and a recording artist I pushed 
pushed through and I'm pushing through and I'm not letting that hold me back or stop me. So it's just kind of, I want people to know more about that and know that you, you can keep doing it and do whatever you need to do, no matter what it is, no matter what kind of disability you may have. And I don't even like to look at it as that either, but yeah, yeah. So it's, it's something that I'm talking more and more about. Well, nothing can stop you. Nothing can hold you back. Um, I, I wish you luck with everything coming up for you. And I know you're going to rock it every single time, whatever you do. Um, Thank it's, you. <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking with you today, Bree. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And thank you to our viewers for watching. This has been Inbox with Julia Cosby on Take TV. Can't tell what's wrong, it feels so right